Are you feeling confused by all the different Ubuntu-based distributions? Wondering how all of them differ from one another and which one is right for you? Well, I tested nine popular Ubuntu-based Linux distros, and here's how I'd rank them from the not-so-good to better than Ubuntu itself. Ubuntu is by far the most popular Linux distro to the point that its name is synonymous with Linux itself. It offers a stable and reliable user experience while being compatible with all the popular apps and packages. Many developers and communities have taken this successful core and built different flavors of Ubuntu, official and unofficial. While some of these distros are not so good, others, I find, outshine the original, and here's my ranking of nine of the most popular ones. 9. Elementarius Elementary OS was one of the first distros I used when I got into Linux back in 2016. When I decided to revisit the distro a few days ago, for the purpose of writing this piece, I was surprised to see it looks and feels exactly the same. Maybe it's a little more polished than it was before, but there isn't much difference. And for me, that's a bad thing. I left elementary OS because I didn't like the overall aesthetics of its desktop environment. Pantheon. So I wasn't charmed to see nothing really had changed in the last 10 years. That said, this is definitely a subjective qualm, and you might actually like it if you're looking for a simple desktop experience rocking a macOS-style layout. Unfortunately, I'm just not a fan of its choice of icons, design styles, and overall user interface. Even on the functionality front, it looks and feels very limited compared to Ubuntu or the other distros on this list. Not to mention that you can make Ubuntu look like macOS, and it will look better than elementary OS. Lubuntu Lubuntu is an official Ubuntu flavor, which means you're getting the core Ubuntu experience, but instead of GNOME, it uses LXQT, a lightweight desktop environment designed for efficiency. If you've got a really old, low-powered laptop gathering dust because it can't even handle Ubuntu, let alone Windows, then Lubuntu might just breathe new life into it. LXQT barely makes a dent in your system resources, making it one of the best options for extremely dated hardware. LXQT achieves this level of efficiency by sacrificing the design and overall aesthetics. As such, Lubuntu feels like using an OS from the early days of Linux. Think lots of small applets, visually inconsistent right-click menus, and interface elements that'll remind you of Windows 95. It feels like it's built from a purely utilitarian perspective without any consideration for how it actually looks or feels to use. While I can see it being useful in specific scenarios, and I'm glad an option like this exists, I don't see myself using it, which is why I'm putting it so low on my list. 7. Zubuntu. Zubuntu, like Lubuntu, is another official flavor of Ubuntu, replacing GNOME with X, and like LXQT, X is also focused on efficiency and performance for older, low-powered systems. The main difference is that X isn't as aggressive about stripping everything away and, as a result, actually looks better than Lubuntu. X carries a certain Windows XP-like charm that I can see people appreciating. It's also much more functional than LXQT, offering more customization options and richer features. If you're a power user stuck on older hardware, you'd find Zubuntu a lot more functional and feature-rich. The reason I have it lower on the list is because I personally don't have a requirement for a lightweight system, and it's too bare-bones for my liking. Note, it's also worth mentioning that X uses the GTK3 toolkit whereas LXQT uses QT. This is relevant because most Linux apps are based on the GTK framework, meaning most apps will look good on X while looking somewhat out of place on LXQT, as I mentioned earlier. 6. Linux Lite Linux Lite uses Ubuntu LTS as its stable base, but makes tons of customizations to create a unique user experience, specifically catering to Linux newcomers migrating away from Windows. The goal is to be as user-friendly as possible, and it achieves this by bundling useful graphical apps designed to help with all your routine tasks on your new Linux system. No terminal required. A few standout apps include the Lite Software Installer, which gives you a one-click option to install many useful apps, even ones not available in the official Ubuntu repository. Then there's Light Tweaks, a powerful tool that helps you customize the distro. What I love about Light Tweaks is that it tells you the safety rating of each tweak, whether it's risky or safe, so you can make informed decisions. On the design front, the distro is using a highly customized version of X, but I find it far more superior and tasteful compared to Zubuntu. 
Furthermore, being X, it's also reasonably lightweight and functions perfectly on less powerful systems, making it a great distribution for hardware that can't run Windows anymore. 5. Zoringus. Zorin OS is a top choice for Linux newcomers searching for a Windows-like experience. It's based on GNOME like Ubuntu, but it's heavily customized to the point where you won't even recognize it's GNOME. By default, it looks like Windows 7, but you can change that using the Zorin Appearance app to make it look more like Windows XP or even Mac OS. There's also a paid version called Zorin OS Pro where you get even more layouts, including a Windows 11 version. Apart from looking like Windows, it comes with wine and bottles which can help you run many Windows apps. You can check app compatibility on WineDB if you're curious about specific software. It's a nice distro that works perfectly as a transitional experience away from Windows and into Linux. The thought and polish that go into making Windows users feel at home are genuinely impressive. All that said, its main selling point is offering a Windows-like user experience, but I'm not looking for that. It's a chapter in my life that I'm not nostalgic for, which is why it has a lower ranking on my list. For Linux Mint. Similar to Zorin OS, Linux Mint is another Windows-like Ubuntu-based distro targeting Linux newcomers, and one of the most popular distros at that. It's also the only distro on this list that gives you three different desktop environments to choose from. X, Mate, and Cinnamon. I'm personally not a fan of its X and Mate editions and think that Linux Lite is a better alternative than both. However, the Cinnamon edition is much more polished and relatively feature-rich, which is why I'm placing it higher up. Linux Mint is based on the LTS release of Ubuntu, giving you a stable and reliable base. It strips away snaps in favor of flat packs, which is another favorable decision in my book. Furthermore, as a distro geared towards Linux newcomers, it packs in tons of useful graphical tools, so you don't need to use the terminal, if at all. Still, I can't rank it higher as it carries the Windows 7 layout, which I've already established I'm not a fan of. And while it's one of the more feature-rich options, there are more powerful alternatives available, which I've listed below. 3. Poppy Underlinus I personally love Pop underscore OS. There was a time I used to daily drive this operating system, and I genuinely believe it's what Ubuntu should have evolved into. The only reason it's not topping my list is that at the time of writing, the current version of Pop underscore OS is running on Ubuntu 22.04, making it based on a three-year-old distro that feels ridiculously outdated. That said, the distribution is scheduled to receive updates until 2027. As such, if you're looking for a stable option and don't mind somewhat outdated packages, Pop underscore OS can be excellent. The reason Pop underscore OS is lagging behind on updating the distro is because they're currently creating a new desktop environment called Cosmic. Previously, they ran a customized version of GNOME with powerful features like auto-tiling and spotlight-like functionality through extensions. However, GNOME extensions have a tendency to break when GNOME updates, so they decided to create their own desktop environment with all the features they want built right in. At the time of writing, Cosmic is currently in alpha stage of development, and hopefully it will be released soon. When it does, I'm sure Pop underscore OS is going to climb up the ladder and once again become one of the best Ubuntu-based distributions out there, if not one of the best distributions, period. 2. Ubuntu Studio Ubuntu Studio is an official flavor of Ubuntu that targets creative professionals. It ships with a customized version of KD Plasma, my favorite desktop environment, right out of the box. Although I'm not a fan of its default look, since it's Plasma and highly customizable, it's not a deal breaker. It comes with tons of pre-configured creative apps for audio, video, and graphics-related workloads. This can potentially save you a lot of time installing and setting up the apps yourself. There's also a low-latency custom kernel to speed up real-time audio and video processing. Furthermore, specialized tools like the Ubuntu Studio Audio Configuration Utility give you a graphical interface to tweak audio settings, saving you from fumbling around in the terminal. Without a doubt, the main USP for this distro is the pre-configured apps, but you can get all these apps on any Ubuntu-based distro by using the Ubuntu Studio installer tool. This makes the distro feel somewhat redundant, thereby putting it in the number two spot. 1. Kubuntu. 
Similar to Ubuntu Studio, Kubuntu is another official flavor of Ubuntu running KDE Plasma. However, it's more akin to Lubuntu and Zubuntu in the sense that you get an almost vanilla experience of KDE Plasma without any major customization. There are also no extra apps bundled in apart from some system defaults that are expected on any operating system. You can look at it like a simplified version of Ubuntu Studio and that's exactly what I love about it. While I do prefer distros coming bundled with pre-installed apps to make our lives easier, none of the above-mentioned distros offer any apps I personally use on the regular. So having a bloat-free option takes the cake. I said before that pop. Underscore OS would be my favorite Ubuntu-based distro if not for using an outdated base. In light of that, Kubuntu feels like the rightful successor taking its place. Sure, you don't have the customized version of GNOME targeting power users, but you get something better, you get KD Plasma, which is riddled with powerful options. You can check out my article talking about the best KD Plasma features to get an idea of what's possible. There you have it, my rankings of the best Ubuntu-based distros. Of course, this is based on my specific needs and preferences, and obviously your list won't perfectly align with mine. Still, I hope this list helped you discover new Ubuntu alternatives and get an idea of how Linux distributions can vary drastically, even if they're using the same core.